Hello everyone, I'm Lu. So now you know how amazing our brain is. Now let's open the gate of the second part, our reward system and how addiction affected this system. So first of all, let's go back to the first question Ken mentioned in the beginning. How do we survive? Just imagine you are this little kid baby, you just come to this world. You don't understand what other people are talking and you can't speak. What will you do if you get hungry and want some milk? You smile and no one comes and then you cry. This time, mama comes and gives you some milk. You feel so happy after you get the milk. So next time when you, have, when you get hungry again, you will cry. So this is the process that we learn to repeat the behaviors that can provide us pleasurable feelings. It's very important for us to survive. And it happens all the time. Then you grow up and become a businessman. And this time, you want to earn as much money as possible. So you found stock market is a good place. And it's also a good way to collect information from the internet. You don't want to miss any opportunity to earn more money. So you just connect to the internet all the time. But also, you. You are a single young man with a lot of money, but you have no time to meet any women. This time, you found Facebook is a good way to earn some social satisfaction. So you just connect with it all the time. This is the process, again, with how we learn to repeat behaviors that give us pleasurable feelings. And this is uh, actually a very, um, very, um, precious gift that evolution gives us. So, the next big question is, how can we make it? How can our brain make it? So, this process involves a very important circuitry in our brain, the brain reward system. This system contains several important elements, which we will talk about later. Here, you just need to know Whenever this reward circuit is activated, our brain knows something important is happening that is worth remembering and repeating. So, let's talk about the reward system. One most important element of this system is the ventral tegmental area. This area contains a kind of neuron, we call it dopamine neurons. This dopamine neuron will send a signal to nucleus accumbens and release dopamine to nucleus accumbens. If you recall what Ken mentioned in the first section, dopamine is one of the small molecules, we call it neurotransmitters, and it's the message sent from the previous neuron to the next neuron and can activate this next neuron. So when dopamine is released from ventral tegmental area to nucleus accumbens, the neurons in this region can be activated and this process is very important for us to present pleasurable feelings. Why am I talking about dopamine all the time? To understand that, let's go back to an experiment done by scientists like 20 years ago. In this experiment, they use monkey and they can record the dopamine Acti dopamine neuron activity in the monkey brain, and this can reflect uh, how much dopamine the neuron release. So, in this experiment, they give them a reward. This is an unexpected reward. The monkey doesn't know he will get it. So, in this situation, what's happening is that the dopamine level will increase when they get this unexpected reward. It's like a gift you receive in your birthday or surprise party, and this time you will feel so happy when you get it. <laughs> and in the next, they train the monkey to recognize this visual cue. This cue can be a red dot on the screen, and whenever they see this, a reward will come later. So after training, they will know whenever, uh, every time they see this cue, they will get a reward. In this situation, what's happening is, your dopamine neural activity will increase when you see the cue, but will keep the same when you actually get the reward. It's like you work hard in the whole month and you get your paycheck in the end, so you feel, yeah, that's okay. And in the end, they also 
did another experiment. They give the monkey the cue that can predict the reward. But later, nothing comes. They didn't get the reward. In this situation, what's happening is, yes, it increases when they see the cue, but then the dopamine level decreases when they miss the reward. This is like you expect $10,000, but you actually get $1. In this situation, you will be very sad or even angry. So if we go through this experiment again, when dopamine activity is high, you feel very happy, and it's normal, you feel okay, and when it's low, you feel sad. So this experiment really can reflect that dopamine level might be uh, the source of happy feelings and our motivations to do certain things. So now you know dopamine is important. If this is a monkey playing internet, that might be his dopamine level in his brain. It's very high. So you now uh, know that dopamine release is very important for the reward system. But how can it work in the next? This involves a process called dopamine transmission. Here, dopamine is released from ventral tegmental area to the nuclear circumference. And there, this thing happens, as Ken mentioned. So, this is a detail uh, showing what's happening in the synapse. Dopamine is released when this neuron from ventral tegmental area is activated, and dopamine will bind to these dopamine receptors and then activate the neuron in nuclear circumference. And this will cause the happy feelings. And when they uh, finish their task, they will be removed by a molecule called dopamine transporter to the neuron which they are released. And in this time, they can be reused the next time. So whenever they finish their task, they will be removed. This is uh, um, an animation showing this process. These blue dots are um, dopamine molecules, and these are dopamine receptors. And these purple ones are dopamine transporters. So, activity come and release dopamine, activate this neuron, and then they are removed by dopamine transporter, and this neuron will stop its activity. So now you know the dopamine system and how it um, can cause our happy feelings. Uh, let's go back to addiction again. So you know that addictive drugs always cause a strong pleasurable feeling in the beginning. That's uh, because uh, almost all addictive drugs will involve our reward system. Like this figure shows here, uh, the drug is cocaine. Cocaine will block the dopamine transporter so that this time, when dopamine is released, it cannot be removed from the synapse and will just uh, stay here and uh, elicit intense happy feelings by increasing the activity of this neuron. This is the animation showing this process. Cocaine comes, block the uh, transporter. When dopamine is released, activate this neuron but it cannot go back, so it comes here again and causes intense feelings. This is another comparison between the drug condition and the normal reward condition, with a lot more dopamine in our synapse. We will have a much stronger and longer lasting artificial pleasure sensation than natural highs. So now you know, in short term, it might be good. But if you take it again and again, what's happening is some long-term change to your brain. One is the tolerance. You will need a higher and higher dose to achieve the initial drug effect. And also you develop the dependence. Your brain adapts to the repeated drug exposure and functions normally only in the presence of drug. And if you withdraw from the drug, you will have some uncomfortable physiological reactions. <coughs> it can be mild, like a headache when you withdraw from coffee, or it can be life-threatening in other situations. So, this is what's happening in an alcoholic. I'm trying to regulate my dysregulation. <laughs> you cannot stop it. 
you already know that we can get addicted to more than drugs. For example, we can get addicted to internet, such as Facebook and internet games. And also, we can get addicted to thrill-seeking behaviors like extreme sports and gambling. What's happening when we are doing this uh, extreme activities or these activities is very similar in drug condition. Because these activities are very strong and intense, they will cause a lot of dopamine release to the nuclear circumference. It will increase dopamine level compared to natural reward. So what's happening here is you have a lot more dopamine. The Facebook icons are not released from the dopamine neurons. It's just showing with Facebook you have a lot more dopamine than like food. But if you are exposed to this high level of dopamine again and again, and for a long time, what's happening is that you will lose these dop dopamine receptors. Yeah, it causes intense happy feelings. But what's happening next is you will have uh, de decreased the dopamine receptors in your brain. So this is a comparison between normal people and addicted people. Here uh, it shows uh, the dopamine level in your brain region. The red means you have a lot of dopamine receptors, and the green means you have less. So if you compare the normal and addicts in the cocaine, alcohol, and the heroin addictions, the things are very similar. You will have a decreased dopamine receptor. And what's the consequence of that? It will diminish your sensitivity to natural rewards. Uh, for example, the natural rewards can be a food. This time, it cannot elicit a lot of dopamine release. Because you have less dopamine receptors, you will not be responsible to the less dopamine. And what's similar is the internet addiction. Here, after internet addiction, you will also have decreased the dopamine receptor in this brain region. So you will also have diminished the sensitivity to natural rewards. <coughs> it's very interesting that scientists have found the thrill-seeking behaviors also depends on your dopamine receptors. People with less dopamine receptors are more likely to pursue thrill-seeking activities because the normal activity cannot elicit their happy feelings, so they go to this extreme activity to gain more dopamine. But certainly, things are more than dopamine receptors. Here, the whole brain is changed by addiction. For example, the prefrontal cortex, which usually control our attention and will inhibit your inappropriate reactions. But after a long time addiction, what's happening is you cannot resist the impulse to check Facebook while listening to the talk. And also, you will have problem with the reward system. Nothing can cause happy feelings except the Xbox. And you will have problem with the motivation system. You lose motivation to do anything except to play internet games. And also, you will have impaired learning and memory. So, in summary, in this part, we talk about the brain reward system uses dopamine to provide pleasurable feelings so that we can learn to repeat behaviors leading to rewards. And addictive drugs and activities will increase dopamine level in the reward pathway. And in short term, it will give us intense euphoria. But in long term, it will impair the whole brain. That's um, the second part. Thank you. Let's welcome Deepo, and he will talk about how.